طيب السلام آه عليكم يعطيك آه العافيه دكتور بدر ثانك يو دكتور بدر فور ذا انفورماتيف ليكتشر اور توك اند اولسو ذا اورجنايزنج اند ذا دايركتورز اوف ذا كورس محمد عرفات ادلت ايمرجنسي ميديسن كونسلتنت ات كينج سعود يونيفرستي ميديكال سيتي ام اي ووت توك اباوت انفكشن كنترول ميجرز اند امبورتنت بي بي ايز اور بيرسونال بروتكتيف اكوبمنت ان ذا ديورينج ذا كوفيد 19 ام ايفن 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 ذا ديورينج ذا كوفيد 19
So what is the equipment needed as, as the uh, droplet precaution? But here the difference is the N95 respirator or popper. Uh, so gown, gloves, uh, goggles, and N95, plus private room with HEPA filter. So this room, the airborne room, is supposed to be a negative pressure room. So this is the uh, HEPA filter. And uh, as we have it either uh, built in uh, in our negative pressure room or portable HEPA filter. HEPA filter. So, um, talking about COVID, specifically COVID-19 uh, patient, what is, what is the PPE required? If you're dealing with non-critically ill patient with no any erosal generating procedure, the standard will be contact droplet, uh, droplet transmission precaution. If you are dealing with a critically ill patient or erosal generating procedure here, uh, we should upgrade our precautions to airborne. Uh, this point, um, according to our infection control guidelines, so any critically ill patient, even if you are not doing erosal generating procedure, you should have your um, uh, uh, airborne precautions. Uh, according to our, our hospital policy, there is a debate about this. If, uh, a lot of references and recommendations that if you're dealing with a critically ill patient and you are not doing erosal generating procedure, you can have the contact droplet. But to maximize safety and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, protection for our uh, staff, any critically ill patient, we should have uh, airborne transmission precaution. Because of the nature of this, those patients, those patients might need for a sudden uh, or out of nowhere while taking care of them, they might go into respiratory arrest, they might need immediate bagging or airway intervention, or they can go to cardiac arrest. So whenever you are taking care of a critically ill patient, the best uh, to have your or, uh, your airborne precautions rather than um, contact droplets. So, uh, Dr. Bader talks about erosal generating procedure, which mandates uh, airborne precaution, even in stable patients. An example for this, or the most common is uh, intubation here, ambo bagging, non-invasive ventilation, uh, bronchoscopy that commonly used in, uh, in ICUs, nasopharyngeal uh, pharyngeal swab, cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR, and uh, open suction. Open suction. So, um, again, if, you are, if I decided to have my airborne precaution for a patient that, for a COVID patient, either suspected or confirmed. So, the required precaution that I should have, disposable gun, as we said, fluid resistant, head cap, fit tested in 95, uh, and or a, a popper if, and we'll, we'll talk about this scenario, when to use popper and when to use N95. Uh, then face shield or goggles to cover your eyes, uh, especially if you're dealing with uh, airway uh, procedure like uh, intubation or uh, swapping, so it's a must. Face shield is uh, it's very important here to protect your eyes specifically. Gloves, uh, double is preferable if you are dealing with heavily contaminated, uh, uh, to protect you not from like uh, um, injury or whatever, no, because sometimes we have the um, poor quality, unfortunately, gums that it might be torn at or it not fit or close at your wrist. So wear gloves below the gun, then put the gun up, for, uh, pull it, then the other glove will be above, uh, above the gun. So you, you are covering the gun from above and below, so this will work as a valve to protect you from any spillage or leaking of secretion into your skin. Uh, you should have always alcohol-based hand rub, uh, disinfectant wipes, and this is also very important uh, point, to have either the proper shoes cover that cover the whole leg or wipeable shoes. Uh, so in case of any spillage or leak, uh, leakage of uh, secretions or uh, contamination, if you have um, the regular shoes is that you cannot wipe, this will be contaminated and it can uh, transmit infection uh, to the area outside the room or it can be uh, contamination to you itself. So wipeable shoes is here is very important or you can have the full cover. So talking about surgical mask, as we said uh, initially, is, is a uh, surgical mask is a loose mask that used uh, for common respiratory infections. So it prevents them, and the most important part, it's prevent the droplets from traveling uh, 
uh, and to, uh, from transmission of the droplet uh, to long distance, uh, we should, while dealing with a COVID patient, always please make sure if you are going to interview your patient or do vital signs or regular uh, uh, assessment that does not mandate assessment of airway, make sure that your patient have, your, uh, have a surgical mask to prevent uh, spreading of infection in the surrounding area. So any patient, please, with, with uh, uh, respiratory symptoms, make sure that they have their own surgical mask all the time in, uh, in the presence of uh, uh, medical care or healthcare workers. So this will work to, again, to prevent the droplets from transmission uh, uh, outside um, or for a long distance and to prevent uh, or minimize hand-mouth contact. So if you are an infected person and you keep touching your mouth, then your hand will keep touching the surfaces. So this will theoretically reduce the risk of transmission if you have it a habit for any respiratory illness patient. So N95, N95 is what is recommended for air, uh, airborne precaution. N95 is a tight fitting mask to prevent the inhalation of a small infectious particles. Uh, usually N95 should, not, uh, should be used after uh, fit testing. So never use uh, randomly sized N95. The proper way to have your N95 to go to your infection control department, make sure you have a fit tested uh, N95. Uh, if there is a scenario that we should not use N95, uh, and this will be the replacement for this, either to avoid the contact with this patient and ask someone who ha has had the fit test or to use the popper. So, this is what we call popper. It's the power air uh, purifying respirator. It's a battery uh, powered uh, filter. Uh, usually, we, we, uh, it's, it's come with a belt. Uh, it will be fixed here. And this pipe will give you uh, filtered air from the surrounding. It will work similar to a positive pressure uh, mechanism. So this air will be in high pressure. It will go through. Uh, the mask and then will uh, uh, go out from the ending here. So it will prevent you from inhaling uh, the air from the surrounding. Uh, the popper will be, uh, for sure, it's higher protection than the uh, level of protection than N95, although N95 is acceptable and this is standard. Uh, when to use popper? If your N95 uh, mask is not, uh, if you are not fit, you failed all the options or you are, uh, you have facial hair or or uh, you have any deformity that prevent you from uh, uh, have good uh, fit testing, or if you uh, if you are in a scenario that you are fitted for for example size one eight six zero, and for any reason it was not available that time in the area, so please don't uh, pick any randomly uh, in ninety five, either ask someone else to go in with his uh, with uh, his or her uh, fit tested in ninety five or use the popper, so. Uh, th this is the only option to do it. Uh, uh, mixing between the sizes of N95 will not be uh, safe and it, it's not acceptable at all. So, um, talking about PPEs, PPEs is very important. Uh, the process of putting the DP PPE and removing it, it's what we call donning and doffing. Uh, it's important to follow it in the proper way to maximize our safety, uh, especially for doffing or removing on uh, removing the uh, protective equipment, uh, not doing it in the proper way in order and the proper sequence might contaminate you and put you at risk of transmission. So starting about, um, with donning or putting on the PPEs, uh, first of all, it should be in a space where it's safe, away from the patient room. Uh, and usually we do it in the empty room of our isolation room. If you don't have, if your isolation room is not, uh, uh, there is no any empty room for it, you can just do it outside the room in a space place. Uh, make sure that you have all the equipment needed before starting and make sure um, all the equipment are on before going on the, uh, inside the patient room. Uh, and please, if you are don't, or your PPE are on, don't, uh, don't try to readjust PPE while uh, inside the patient room. Like if, for example, uh, you, you contaminated your gloves, 
either assess if you can clean it or wipe it or wash it, this will be an option. Otherwise, don't readjust or remove any type of PPE inside the patient room. Just leave the room, re uh, uh, do a doff uh, or change whatever needed and come back. Uh, so please, again, this is very important. Uh, we should we should do this in a proper steps in a safe place before going inside the patient room. Uh, here in this part, it's advisable to have in each area what we call donning and doffing officer or infection control officer. This person can be can be one of our team, one of our nurses or physician even, to observe everyone who's uh, putting on the PPE and make sure there is no any like deformities, no any scratches or opening on the DBT uh, on the PPE, uh, and make sure everyone is safe before entering the patient room. This is what we uh, what I uh, uh, explained. Uh, this is the proper step of donning, uh, starting with the gown. The gown should be uh, should be water resistant or fluid resistant gown to protect to maximize the protection. If uh, in case you don't have the water resistant, you can use the apron, which is the plastic uh, uh, chest bar that used usually in OR. Put it on, then put the uh, uh, the non-water resistant gun. Then uh, the next step will be either surgical mask if this contact droplet precaution or N95 if this is an airborne precaution. After that, followed by the uh, goggles and face shield or face shield, then the gloves. And here the point of uh, gloves, as I said, maybe double gloves will be um, better. So one one glove will be below the gun, then pull the gun up to here then put the other glove so the two pair of uh, two two gloves will, will will work as a valve to prevent any leakage into uh, uh, the gown inside uh, so this is this was like simply about donning uh, talking about doffing so doffing is the uh, process of removing the uh, P ppe or personal protective equipment again uh, doffing uh, divided into two steps. Uh, one step will be inside the patient room and the second step will be outside the patient room. So the step that to be done inside the patient room, make sure that you do it in a safe location, at least six feet or two to three meters from the patient bed. Uh, if you have a small room, just go to the maximum point far away from the patient near to the exit and start doing the doffing. Uh, all PPE should be removed inside the patient room except the mask either N95 or uh, the N95 mask. Uh, before leaving the patient room, make sure that no any signs of gross contamination and remove it if it's there because you don't want to go out to the clean area with contaminated shoes or contaminated uh, uh, clothes. Uh, and please, while doing doffing, this is a very common also, usually the trash or the uh, medical waste will be uh, near to the door. People will try to remove all the equipment and press it. So if it's full, ask someone to remove it or, or don't or throw it in a different place to, to try to compress the waste trash because this will generate more erosions and will contaminate the surrounding air. Uh, for doffing, there is two ways. Uh, this is uh, or two, two sequences to do it. This is what uh, we follow in our hospital and by our infection control department. So starting by removing the gloves, first of all, you should touch the gloves from the inner side here and then remove it. And here with your bare, ha bare hand, uh, try to remove this, not to touch the outer surface. This is very important because you don't want to contaminate your hand. So try, this is very important, try to remove it from the inner side without touching it. Then after that, we remove the goggles or face shield because this will be heavily contaminated part and you don't want to remove it uh, before removing the gun, after removing the gun. So then remove the gun, then apply high hygiene and go out of the patient room and then the final step will be the N95. Oh, the first three steps here will be inside the patient room, as we said, in a safe place, as much as far from the patient, two to three meter will be the best option. Uh, apply hand hygiene, then leave the patient room and, and uh, don't adopt the or remove the uh, mask. So what is special about COVID uh, from infection control perspective? Uh, try to avoid any uh, generate, uh, erosive generating procedure. 
uh, high flow oxygen more than six liter, uh, high flow nasal cannula, mimic breather mask, uh, ambu bagging, and uh, also uh, non invasive ventilation. Uh, make sure that if you are uh, in need for this uh, uh, interventions, that your patient in a negative pressure room with airborne precaution, and this is really needed, and consult your seniors before uh, starting uh, any potentially uh, high-risk uh, erosive generating procedure. Uh, this is from infection control perspective, a few, a few points about what is special about COVID uh, intubation. Uh, I will not go through the details because it will be discussed later on. Uh, just rapid sequence intubation will be the best option. Uh, it will ensure that your patient is paralyzed with enough dose of paralytic that will make it, uh, the intubation easier and faster. The intubation must be performed by the most skilled physician in order to minimize the attempt and save the time. Um, the video laryngoscope is advisable or recommended uh, also for, for, for both to minimize the, time, uh, the number of attempts, to minimize the time, and also to, to maximize the safety distance between the intubator and the patient. Um, it's uh, very, very uh, it's very advisable because you know if, if you most uh, I, I I do believe that most of us we witnessed intubation uh, during our training, either if uh, we are medical resident or ICUs or intubation or uh, uh, ER, and most of us we did intubation, doing it in the uh, traditional way by the direct uh, laryngoscope will put you at a significant risk and in a very close contact with the patient. The video laryngoscope will be the best option. And make sure that you remove all the PPE uh, in the pro proper way. Uh, and again, we re-emphasize here on donning and doffing officer. This is very important measure to protect uh, ourselves and protect uh, our uh, institution from cross-contamination and from exposure. And again, the, finally, this is a summary about what is the PPE required for droplet contact. This is if I'm dealing with non-critically ill patient for, uh, with COVID suspected or confirmed, plus I don't have any erosal generating procedure. So the option will be droplet contact, gown, gloves, surgical mask, and face shield. If I'm dealing with a critically ill patient, or a patient with uh, uh, erosive generating procedure, I should upgrade this to airborne precaution. Um, and the difference will be in 95. Uh, this, is, this is, in summary, what is the PPE and what is the uh, infection control uh, measures that we should follow while, while dealing with a COVID patient. Uh, be safe and uh, maximize your safety. If you are always in doubt about what can I do, upgrade your precautions rather than downgrade it. And always ask, uh, uh, in the clinical area, you have your charge nurses that they can help. You have the infection control representative or on call, and you have your consultants. If you are in any doubt about what type of precaution I should follow, just ask before going in, and we should watch each other. Uh, if you know this and you're noticing someone is going inside a patient, room that he's supposed to be with airborne precaution and he's using some, something uh, below what uh, the level of airborne, just uh, ask people to uh, review what, what they are supposed to do and make sure that we observe each other. Um, this is very important safety measures. We should work all as a team and uh, to protect our institution and ourselves. And finally, don't, don't forget the universal masking. So please, whatever, whenever you are in a clinical area, make sure that you have your surgical mask on uh, all the time to protect yourself and protect the others. And uh, that's it. And thank you so much for uh, listening.